All right, friends, we're, we're here with uh, John Cafaza, the, the painter of this scene uh, for Romans, and he's going to share just a little bit about what he uh, has painted into this scene and, and how it got there and why it's there. Thank you, Mike. Folks, I want to just walk you through the landscape here and point out some of the highlights of some of the buildings um, and ruins, particularly, um, that still exist today in Rome. This entire area is called the Roman Forum, and in that time, um, that whole uh, area was used for a lot of different activities uh, in Rome. And what I'm gonna do basically is just point out some of the highlights, some of the areas that you may have seen pictures of before, you may know um, about most of these areas. Uh, but so I'm just gonna go through this quickly, and, and starting here in the center, um, and point out that this area right here in the background is the Roman Colosseum. And if you notice for this sermon series, the graphic that's used every Sunday is a picture of a portion of the Colosseum in Rome. Um, I'm just gonna move um, from here to the left and then I'll come back and, and finish out on the right-hand side. Um, this, um, there's a single column right here that you can see the ruins of a single column. That is the column of Phocas, P-H-O-C-A-S, uh, and that was built in 608 A.D. Now, the uh, other uh, sort of main section of uh, a building, the columns that exist here that remain, uh, th these current ruins uh, were built in 42 B.C., um, current ruinings, meaning uh, it was built long before that, uh, and destroyed and then rebuilt. But this that exists today was rebuilt in 42 BC. This is called the Temple of Saturn. And then moving over a little bit further, you see this uh, steeple here. This is the top part of the Church of Santi Lua Martina. Santi Luca e Martina, built in 222 AD. These, uh, these columns here, uh, part of this building that continues to uh, survive, was built in 203 AD, and that is the Arch of Septimius Severus, right here. Now just the last thing to point out back in here, these three columns, one, two, three. This is the Temple of Titus and Vespasian, built in 79 AD. Going back this way, on the right-hand side of the column of the Colosseum, these three columns, these are ruins of the Temple of Castor and Pollux built in 414 B.C. And then finally, on the right bottom, this area right in here, is all part of the north wall of the Basilica Julia, built in 46 B.C. So as you can see, there's generations and generations represented here in terms of architecture, uh, builders, uh, uses of all of these different buildings for so many different types of things. I encourage you to go and look up some of these. Um, the graphic that I'm holding is a picture of this painting with these labels on it and uh, that will be shared with you and you can take a look at it and you can also do some research on your own to find out a little bit more about some of this great history uh, that's being preserved uh, every day. Thank you, John. I appreciate your, your expertise there, not only as a painter, but a historian. <laughs> and um, as a, a painter, um, share how you began the work uh, and then to completion. Hmm. Um, after determining the layout and the actual picture that I wanted to portray, uh, doing some sketching at home and some layouts of size and trying to accommodate this massive area of the wall that we were trying to cover. Um, 
once I had the canvas ready to paint, I came in um, and on day one, I sort of sketched out the entire thing with a pencil, a lot of erasing, a lot of moving around, but trying to uh, lay it out so that I would know on the canvas once I started where I was headed. Um, as you can tell, it's a long ways from that end to this end. Um, and so that began um, the first phase of it. Um, typically in painting something like this, and, and in many paintings, you start in the background and work your way forward. So painting the sky first, with all of these things sort of already sketched and laid out, painting the sky, uh, and then starting, actually started on the left-hand side of the painting and worked my way to the right. And so starting over here, uh, began filling in um, each of these pieces columns, the buildings in the back, and just began working my way all the way through. And um, maybe to give myself a break on some days, I would switch over from doing structural painting to then maybe working on some of the background, some of the plants and some of the grasses and so forth. I don't know whether you can tell, but this is a, this is actually a fence that curls around this way into a, a walkway. Um, doing things like that sort of help with uh, a little change of pace when you're working on something like this over so many days. Um, I enjoyed the, the detail around the remains of these column bases and being able to lay those out in the right perspective as it goes back to the background. This is a long ways in the foreground to the background back here where these structures are. And then finishing it up uh, sort of on the very last couple of days, fine tuning some of the detail, um, finishing out the background with the trees and the foliage in different areas, um, and just checking sort of the, the details around some of the, as you see, Mike, I don't know whether you can get into a close on this, but some of the detail here. You can tell that that's a broken part of part of the stone work that was done at the top of this structure. Um, so finishing up that um, on the last day or two uh, was kind of the, um, you, you know you're really at, at a point where you can sort of step back and look at it and enjoy it when you're finishing up the final details. So that was the process uh, over about uh, 13 days and uh, thankfully uh, with COVID, uh, in full force at the time. I didn't have much else on my schedule to do, so I had time to just come in here and spend eight or 10 hours every day just working on this, and uh, the church was quiet, um, and it was, a, it was a good experience for me personally to spend this kind of quiet time working on something uh, of this nature uh, to help augment uh, and complement the sermon series. John, we're so thankful for your, your gift, and uh, thanks for sharing it with us. Uh, because of that, um, the uh, reading through the book of Romans has just uh, really taken on greater depth. So thank you so much.